I don't find Ryan Reynolds funny, but he does have a talent. So, The Adam Project giving you this beautiful review here, guys, man. Um, I'll probably not keep it knowing spoilery. Um, movie review here, The Adam Project, man. So, look, man, um, Netflix film. And to put it very simply with this film, I think this is almost, this is almost the best place to start to see whether you will like it or not is are you a Ryan Reynolds fan or are you not a Ryan Reynolds fan? But even more so, do you find Ryan Reynolds funny or do you not? If you're a Ryan Reynolds fan, especially if you find him funny, I think you'd actually enjoy this film. If you don't find him funny, I'm not a fan of his, the film isn't trash, but it's okay. Basically, your enjoyment of the film is dependent on how much of a Ryan Reynolds fan that, that, that as you are. And here's the thing here is that, see, I can just talk about my experience here. This is why I had to give you the whole thing of whether you're a Reynolds fan or not. I just don't find him funny. And you see, comedy is sub sub subjective. And we'll get to comedy being subjective. But for me, I say Cable Guy is the funniest film of all time. But some people who view Cable Guy will be like, this film is freaking creepy and horrific as heck. It's not funny at all. And I'm like, okay. Because I can't explain why I think Cable Guy is hilarious. It's just funny to me. So, people who find Ryan Reynolds funny, they're not wrong. I just don't find him funny. And me not finding him funny, I'm not wrong. Just for me personally, I just don't find him funny. So, this film relies a lot upon... Because it's a... It's, a, it's like a light-hearted... It's a light-hearted sci-fi film. So, very put very simply. So, um, the films... It's a similar to a film called Frequency with... Um, Jim Caviezel and Dennis Quaid, but I'll reference that afterwards. So it's about time tra travel. So um, Ryan Reynolds pilots in the future in 2050. He then travels back in time in 2022 um, because he's trying to stop something from happening. But when he now travels back to 2022, he meets his young self in 2022 and his mom. And he then explains to his young self what he's trying to do because he wants to basically try and change the course of time and um, because something happens in the future and so forth. So he needs to go So he needs to go to 2018. He basically lands in 2022, but he needs to go to 2018 to change something in order to save the future because things just get pretty messed up. So that's the sort of plot of what they're trying to achieve. But I think the kind of emotional core of it, which is why it's similar to the film Frequency, is... Um, so basically, again, this is not really a spoiler. The main character's father dies in a car crash. And when he goes back to 2022, that's only like a year or two after the car crash. And basically, his young self and a single mom played by Jennifer Garner, they're just dealing with the loss of him and so forth. And there's this kind of emotional thing of how his young self is processing it and how his older self is processing it. And like, there's just some scenes between Ron Reynolds and his, his younger self, you know. Um... So, and I think it plays a lot on that emotion. So the film is part comedy, part like emotional, all kind of drama kind of thing, you know? So, which is why I say that, you know, if you're a Ryan Reynolds fan, you like it. But it's really dependent on whether you're a Ryan Reynolds fan or not, and if you find him funny or humorous, because his humor is very particular, you know? And for me, I just don't find it funny. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if you find it funny, it's fine. But I just don't find his humor funny and there's nothing wrong with it. But as I was thinking about this, I was saying to myself that, because my, I decided by saying that comedy is subjective. But then I thought about Eddie Murphy, specifically peak Eddie Murphy, late 80s, early 90s. I've never met anybody, now please show me guys, please, in the comments show me, I've never met anyone who says Eddie Murphy isn't funny. I've never met anyone who did not enjoy Beverly Hills Cop 1 or 2. Or trading places. I've never met anyone, <laughs> you know. So Eddie Murphy was universally funny. And my thing is like, Ryan Reynolds is sort of the present day Eddie Murphy where you just put Eddie Murphy into any film or so forth, he'll instantly make it funny. Like one of the best examples is, oh, two examples. 
Beverly Hills Cop. That was supposed to with, be with Stallone. I don't know who the other guy was, but that was supposed to be given to Stallone, and it was supposed to be a real hand hitting cop drama and so forth with Stallone Stallone. But they then gave it to Eddie Murphy, and it just switched. But if you just watch Beverly Hills Cop 1 again, that's actually a serious cop film. But because Eddie Murphy brings in humor into it, movie magic is, is born, and you just see a guy having a comedic slant on serious situations, which is what makes the magic of Beverly Hills Cop. Bruh, you know, I need to watch that film again, man. Um, go watch the, the Golden Child. Golden Child is like a serious fantasy thing in drama. Eddie Murphy just comes, I, I, I want the knife. Guys, go watch Golden Child, man. Um, so, but I just... It's wrong to say that, oh, Ryan Reynolds is not as funny as Eddie Murphy. But what I'll say is, I don't know anyone who doesn't like Eddie, Eddie Murphy. There's no one I have met who says, no, no not Eddie Murphy now. Peak Eddie Murphy, late 80s, early 90s, I don't think anybody didn't find him funny. Hence why he was a international global star. Bro, I don't find Brad Reynolds funny, and I know there are guys who don't find him funny. I know there are, there are some. There are, now, more people find him funny that don't, hence why he's so famous. But nobody didn't find... Um, there was nobody that said Eddie Murphy was not, was not funny. So... Comedy being so objective doesn't really apply to peak Eddie Murphy, you know, and some may even argue Dave Chappelle, <laughs> you know. So who's going to say that Dave Chappelle isn't funny, especially peak Dave Chappelle? So for Ryan Reynolds, and you see, I was going to say Jim Carrey. Some may say that Jim Carrey was maybe a bit too extreme, but peak Jim Carrey was that dude. <laughs> Who doesn't like Ace Ventura 1 and 2, Liar Liar? The mask, dumb and dumb. So again, Jim, because Jim Carrey is just see, Jim Carrey is just can't cop comedy. You have to laugh. It's he, the stuff that he's doing. If you don't laugh, then there's something wrong wrong with you. But see, but some people say Jim Carrey was a bit too over the top. I'm sorry, Jim Carrey. You have to find Jim Carrey funny. So when I think of Jim Carrey, I think of Eddie Eddie, Eddie Murphy. I don't think anybody did not find them funny. But for Ryan Reynolds, I think it's a quiet taste. So, see, the film is. The film feels like a standard film. Like, there are some interesting ideas here, but I think they lean more towards Ron Reynolds being... Ron, Ron Reynolds' star power and his comedy and the dynamic between him and the kid than I think the film's ideas. Because the film's ideas were like, okay, look, you know, time travel, changing time, but they didn't... They don't do anything interesting with the time travel aspect in the way that they did in, like, Back to the Future 2. Or back to the Future, like when you look at Back to the Future 1 and 2, it's like, it's a time tra travel story, but we're trying to we're really push it. things with the time travel story, specifically with Part 2. We're really trying to take things to the next level and really see what interesting things we can, we can do with the time travel story. Again, the film that this reminds me of the most is Free Frequency. I can't remember which one it was, but starring Jim Caviezel and Dennis Quaid, about how, I think, um, and, and so... Dennis Quaid plays Jim Caviezel's father and so forth and he's using this kind of a radio thing, frequency, to try and um, communicate with his father who's in the past and, and, and so forth. And then it's the core of that story is the relationship between the father and the son. And a big part of this is also the relationship between the young, like Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, his younger self, and also their father, played by Mark Ruffalo, who I thought was really good in the film. Um... So, like, look, the film is, like, the film is decent. Like, it's, it's like, eh, but it's one of those films that you watch and you forget. It's not memorable in any way. You watch it, you forget. Okay, cool. Because I think, um, I think it's Catherine Keener. She's in this as well, because she was in, uh, what was she in? She was in um, Being John Malkovich. Um, because there's something like that they do with the aging technology in it that's a bit, eh. So, but really, the, cr the crux of this film, really, I would say, is a very basic time travel story that takes no risks in the way that Back to the Future or Frequency did. Um, or even you, say, even you would say maybe Terminator to a degree. And a film that relies very heavily on Ryan Reynolds' comedy and you buying into the emotion of a son trying to reconnect with their father and so forth, you know. Um, and for me, see, for me, sometimes it felt a bit cheesy 
a bit, a little bit too cheesy. So, but that's just me, just felt a little bit too cheesy. And I just don't buy Ryan Reynolds as a dramatic actor. I don't, I don't. See, it's, 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 it's weird. I think, you see, I don't find Ryan Reynolds funny, but he does have a talent, which is a weird thing to say. It's like, he is Deadpool, and he has perfect casting for Deadpool. I think there is a... F you see, for me, I liked Deadpool, but I didn't love Deadpool. I think Ryan Reynolds is the kind of guy where... See, if I was actually making a Deadpool film, I would make the I would make the character in a very specific way where his comedy is very kind of specific. It's comedy, but dark comedy in a very specific. I know because with Ryan Reynolds, I know there is there is definitely a way in which he can be very good and effective in a film that I just don't think it's been used in the films that he's in. You know, because I just don't believe that he's as big a star as people think that he is. But that's just me saying because I. Look, I said it again, like, okay, okay, okay let's be, be real here, like, now, nah, I may be wrong here, but I'm not going to put this out there. I think, I'll put it this way, Martin Lawrence, like, like Martin Lawrence TV, perfect said, Martin Lawrence TV show, I'm not sure how many white people are, would really be really into that Martin Lawrence show, because that Martin Lawrence show was very, like, very much black humor, you know, and I said not to what you say with Friends. Friends is very much white humor. Now, black people can like white humor, bro. Like, my sister and my older brother love Friends. But Friends is very much white humor. You don't see many black people who like Friends. I think for Ryan Reynolds, I'm sure some black people like Ryan Reynolds' comedy. But I think his comedy leans more towards white humor, mainly. Whereas Jim Carrey, his comedy was all around. Jim Carrey, globally. Remember, Jim Carrey was in, in Living Colors. So his comedy is all around. Eddie Murphy's comedy is all around. Dave Chappelle, all around. So there's some guys who have, um, is it Bill Burr or something? So there's some, so there's some guys who, the black or white, their comedy is all around. But if let's say you're a Martin Lawrence, that's really black comedy. Or like an Eddie Griffin, black comedy. Look at Ram Reynolds, I think that's really white comedy. So that's my thing. So overall, if I was to grade this film, I've got to give it like a tier three. It's decent, but it does nothing. It's not, it does nothing special, and you don't really, you know, get into it. Side note: just just a side note. Has Zoe Saldana ever had a black love interest? <laughs> Bro, look, I'm just saying because I'll just say what it. Because most of her love so, so I'm thinking of Avatar. I'm thinking of <clears throat> um, Terminal. Because like, I, I think she was in love with Tom Hanks in Terminal. I'm thinking of this film. Which 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 is the other um Guardians of the, of the Galaxy Chris Pratt I think wait, 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 have you ever had like a black love interest I'm just saying but yeah I give this film overall a tier three decent okay cool but nothing memorable and nothing that really stays with you so forth it's just a very standard throwaway film and so forth you know but as for me though the brightest part of this film was I would say was um Macrophilo. Very underrated actor, very underrated. I think because there's just something about my Mark Ruffalo that just feels very real, and I just, I just like the energy that he gives off. Because you know what I always said, listen, I even said this back in the day, The Departed. If The Departed, instead of Matt Damon and Leonardo DiCaprio, you cast Christian Bale and Mark Ruffalo, that would have been a really damn good film. And you want to watch a really good Mark Ruffalo film? Two one, two. two. I think the one that most guys know is Spotlight. He was great in Spotlight. Very good. Zodiac. He was very good in Zodiac. Go watch Zodiac. He was, he was very good, man. So yeah, that's my thoughts there on The Adam Project. Like the video, subscribe. Peace.